Zach Wilson's back for the New York Jets. I just said it's almost Christmas. Okay, well, listen, uh, congratulations. Uh, Hide hide your moms. Zach Wilson is back. Hide your wife. Hide your kids. Uh, Here comes Zach Wilson. They they have announced Mike White is yet to be cleared (laughs) from his his rib issue. (laughs) He could take that literal. And uh, and so Zach Wilson (laughs) is going to get the start uh, coming up on Thursday night as they kick off week 16 at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So here we go, Zach. Wilson's back. All I mean, right. quarterback controversy uh, avoided, and we're just going to go with Zach Wilson moving forward, except for the fact that if he goes out and he bombs. Why are you, and, why are you, why are you speaking negative energy on to that? Yeah, I mean, man? after what he did last week, what, what are you saying uh, that for? Uh, r- listen, Robert Sala causes this, so I don't feel the least well, bit that's, bad about it. I'm not going to deny that. I mean, he, he didn't need to bench him in the first place, technically. Is, yeah, I agree with that. Is, is Zach Wilson – playing for his career in New York on Thursday night. Dang, that's kind of wow. big. Okay, because he, can, he, can I ask this question yeah. though? If you were going to insert him back, was this not the two game stretch that you'd want to insert him back in there for? <laughs> Look at their schedule. You had after Buffalo, which obviously like that stretch for at Minnesota at Buffalo was a tough stretch. Uh, it was a tough stretch and they lost by in both cases one score games. You know, Mike White played tough. Now he's got some rib injury that literally won't clear him. Ten doctors won't clear him, quote unquote. Ten doctors. Just no one will clear him. Um, And he can't play versus Detroit, 31st defense in the NFL. And now, you know, short week, can't play versus the 27th ranked defense in the NFL. It just seems like there was the thought that maybe, hey, we'll we'll let Zach, you know, sit out, go this whole thing. Let's put him back in versus the, the layups where he should be able to look good and help get us a win. That didn't happen last week versus Detroit. That's kind of, a, kind of a damning that, thing for second round, the second overall pick, no? Like, well, I, I mean, they're trying to set him up for success, and, and I kind of look at last week and, and the same things that I think Jets fans that I've seen throughout his career so far is inconsistent accuracy. Like, he, he there's wide open guys on third downs throughout the course of the game or other plays, and he's, he's missing guys. And then you see, you know, a tough decision, the, the pick. Um, there's a number of those you'll see, and you just go, you know, he, he forces things or locks in on guys. And then you see a few good plays, and you go, okay, like he's capable of that. So it, it's tough because you haven't really seen the growth and development you're looking for. And I think had you left him in, you might have seen that by now. You know, you, you might have saw the growth and development if he would have played versus Minnesota and Buffalo and some of these other teams. Um, and And – been able to get that experience because I think that comes with reps and the only way you know whether or not he's going to be able to do it is is through more reps so the the fact that you took him out for what three games whatever it was I mean to me that's that that was where you kind of hindered his ability to really see what you have in him and it's why I didn't like the benching in the first place like if he's going to sink let him go out there and sink it's on him at some point too where he's got to make the corrections and fixes but if he's going to swim, you never know because he's sitting on the bench for three weeks. So now, now he's got a short week at home that usually plays to the strength of the home team. You know, the Jets are favored in this one, one of the few games they've been favored all year. They should win this. They should win this. He should be able to play well versus this defense. The Jaguars have not played well uh, the, this, the entirety of the season defensively. So we'll see what happens. But I, I don't know that I'm ready to say, like, if he doesn't, it's it's the end of his career with the Jets I I just I think the move in general would lead you to think that if they can get an upgrade at quarterback in the offseason they're going to go do it like Robert Sala already kind of has admitted to that much Uh, but you're you're a seven and seven football team if you lose this one go seven and eight uphill battle going to Seattle and to Miami to finish the season well not to mention you you allow for a grown man whether young or not you allow for that young professional man to work through not only the problems and and the things he needs to correct on the field, but the things that he needs to correct off of it. Learn how to interact with your teammates. If if Robert Salah needed to insert himself, oh geez, if Robert Salah needed to get involved with with the situation, then do it in the team meeting room. Do it behind closed doors. Right, bring him into the office, talk to him about how he handled things with the media, and and allow him grace, allow him the opportunity as 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 it's stated by by Q on the field 
some of the mistakes he's made on the field, allow for him to make those mistakes off the field as well and make those coaching and teaching points. That's what coaches do. You don't you don't just turn turn away and say, okay, you handled this wrong. The team doesn't like you now. They're looking at you strange. Like you basically threw the team under the bus. You took no real accountability. You showed a lack of leadership skills. I'm benching you. And then you know what happens after this last game? They lose the game. And you hear you hear Zach say all of the things that the coach will want to hear a guy say. The only problem with that is is that you took him out of games. You you basically, you know, you, you basically embarrassed him, right? You you you. I, I don't know if you demoralized him, but maybe there could be a level of demoralizing that was involved as well. And then now he comes back. You have a losing effort, and and instead of him being able to organically evolve into who he needs to be with this team, he's walking on eggshells. You best believe that Zach Wilson is right now walking on eggshells because, to me, I look at it as if the real reason that he was pulled out and was not dressing was because of what the divide was amongst team members after that game and after the things he said and not taking accountability, then now to me, you've said that, you know, you're not as important as as you may have thought you were. You're you're actually much more expendable than maybe what you might have thought you were. And and for what it's worth, if you make a mistake, depending on the level of what my interpretation, the head coach or your teammates' interpretation of what your mistakes were or mistake was will dictate your playing time. And I don't know how you're able to have success if you're feeling that way when you're going into your workplace. One of the reasons that was thrown out there that they made the switch to begin with was not just the comments post game that may have pissed off some teammates, but there was also the thought that Robert Sala felt like this team has a legitimate chance to be a playoff team and he's not going to take any chances. So he went to Mike White. So he basically said, Mike White's our better option at quarterback. Okay. Well, their playoff chances are are slim at this point. I mean, they've still got an opportunity, but, I mean, they're falling behind as they lose all these games. They've lost three of four. And if Zach Wilson goes out and they lose Thursday night and he doesn't play well, then what? Because it just it feels like – so now you, you finish up the season, as Brady pointed out, at Seattle and at Miami – If you go to Mike White to finish off the season, holding on to your slim playoff hopes again, that's it, right? Like you can't – I don't know how you go back to Zach Wilson and just say, no, no, listen, forget about last year. I mean, we know you weren't good enough to try and hopefully get us in the playoffs, and we told you so publicly that we feel like we're in a better spot with somebody else to try and get us to the playoffs, and we didn't make the playoffs, but we'd love to have you back. It just – it feels like he's kind of created this mess to where no matter what, they're going to get dirty. Like, you know, it's funny. You're talking a lot from the Zach Wilson angle, which I, I, I fully expect him to be able to play well on a short week at home versus Jacksonville. I, I just do. Like, I, I don't know that this hypothetical is going to, you know, we're going to be having this conversation after this game. I, I think they'll get the win. But what about Mike White? <laughs> like, for a guy who's only done like, everything you've asked of him, you kind of put him in an awful spot. Yeah. I mean, like, like, again, I don't know the specifics to the injury. It seems a little overstated or overblown that 10 doctors wouldn't allow him to go back in the game with a rib injury. I mean, we, we've seen guys play with all sorts of different injuries. It's, it's a bit surprising. Um, and, and usually at this point, with, with three games to play, you would hear the doctors, if it's that significant, they would just say he's out for the year. Yes, you're right. So the, so the fact that they haven't said that, and the fact that they're saying like, yeah, but he's you know well, week to week or however they've that means they want to they want to have the option to put him back in, and 100%. we all know what that we know what that is, we yeah. we know what the interpretation of that is. We don't trust Zach Wilson, no, yeah. and we don't trust him. And if we can get Mike White going and get him healthy and get him back in there and see if we can finish out with two and one. three and zero oh, to try to make it into the playoffs, that's that's exactly what we're going to do. That's how many wins did he need to get in the next three in order to get it? It has to be at least two, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, because the Patriots hold the tiebreakers because uh, they swept those two games with them. I, I, well, I mean, I mean, something uh, tells me the Patriots season maybe just yeah. that might fall <laughs> well, apart too. Huh? That too, uh, that uh, one might yeah. go down. It, it, it might get tossed backwards at the end of the game and, and picked oh, off. No, oh, that's just out wow. of line. Wow. Good God, yeah. that's just how could you? Wow. Um, I'm just saying. I mean, that that, that kind of is how it feels like the season may go. 